Okay, so how do I do melanoma markers in my practice? That is a great question, and it depends on the scenario. When I'm looking at a, a regular skin lesion and I'm trying to decide is this a dysplastic nevus or a, a melanoma, I often use markers like SOX10 or some people like MART1 better to look for the growth pattern to see if there's pagetoid spread or confluence. And then in, in my practice now, I often use PRAIM. It's not a perfect marker, but it's pretty helpful. Um, and then in spitzoid things, I do other stuff uh, as well. And then when I'm, when I'm in the context of looking at, is this chunk of tumor in a lymph node or somewhere else, is it metastatic melanoma versus other? In this setting, what I want is a very sensitive marker to rule out melanoma. So usually I would start with SOX10 or S100. In my hands, they're both relatively uh, the same as far as sensitivity goes. Um, I feel like SOX10 is a cleaner stain and it is uh, not... S100 stains quite a few different things, plus background Langerhans cells and dendritic cells. SOX10 does stain other things like neural lesions. It can stain um, poorly differentiated metaplastic breast cancer and others. So it's not a totally uh, specific marker for melanoma, but it's very sensitive and it's very clean. So I usually will start with that. You can start with MART, and if MART's positive on this, you're done, is metastatic melanoma. There are some very rare other things like clear cell sarcoma or something that you could think about um, or malignant pecoma, but depending on the morphology and the situation, you may or may not consider those things. Here, I think it's way too pleomorphic to, to fit for, for, a, for a clear cell sarcoma usually. Um, they're not usually so pleomorphic. But I would, I usually though would do SOX. If SOX is positive, then you can add MART to help confirm it. But I see melanomas that have total loss of MART and HMB on a regular basis, particularly spindle cell melanomas and almost essentially always desmoplastic melanomas. And then also big bulky melanoma mets like this often begin to de-differentiate and lose their melanocytic marker expression, either partially or completely. So, um, you know, a, a big ugly epithelial melanoma usually will have some MART left in it somewhere, but it can have big zones of loss. So like on a core needle biopsy, MART can be totally negative, and uh, especially in spindled melanoma, I see that all the time. And then people are, you know, always like, thinking it's going to be a neural tumor or something like that. And usually it's just the spindle melanoma. So it's kind of complicated, but that's basically my, my kind of basic approach. And I actually have a video about um, uh, melanocytic immunostains. It doesn't include how I approach PRAIM, but it kind of goes through SOX, S100, HMB, and MART and talks about how I use them and in what situations I use them or don't use them. And I've got like a little table in that video that I show. It's a table from my Derm Path Survival Guide book, but you can check that out. It's on YouTube and Kiko. Uh, just look up at like mel melanocytic immunohistochemistry and it should pop right up. And that has a, a more detailed table than, than what I just mentioned. So any other questions? What are your thoughts on PRAM and its incorporation here in spinning moments? So I use PRAM um, in uh, the setting of, of a, a primary uh, like skin lesion where I'm trying to decide, I, I know it's melanocytic, and I'm trying to decide if it's uh, an atypical nevus or a melanoma. Uh, PRAM can be helpful there that if it's strongly positive or, or the positive in the majority of cells, it can either tip me over the edge from calling something atypical proliferation, I'm not sure, to calling it just outright melanoma, or it can at least raise enough concern that I share it with my colleagues or maybe do molecular testing. It depends on the situation. Um, if it's negative, it's reassuring, but there are melanomas that are sometimes prime negative. So it's not a perfect stain, but it's pretty helpful in select situations. I don't do it on everything. I personally don't ever use it on metastatic lesions because here I know this is malignant. All I'm trying to figure out now is is this tumor melanocytic differentiation or is it carcinoma or something else, right? I can see by the cytology, the mitoses, and the fact that it's replacing a lymph node that we're dealing with cancer here. So PRAIM, I think, is helpful for trying to help us decide cancer versus not cancer in melanocytic lesions. Here, the cancer question's answer. The question now I have is, is it melanocytic versus other type of cancer? So that I wouldn't use PRAIM in this setting, but I do find it helpful in skin biopsies. Anything else before we move on? Sorry, have you found studies helpful in skin exclusion for melanoma where you're trying to decide if there's residual versus melanocytic hypoplasia? Um, no, not really. Oh, the question, I'm sorry, I, I need to repeat these for online. Uh, the question is in skin excisions, um, do I find PRAIM helpful if I'm trying to decide is there some focal residual melanoma like melanoma in situ versus background hyperplasia like maybe like you'd see in, a, in an excision of lentigo maligna on sun damaged skin? I don't because I feel like you can see some scattered prame in the background skin, particularly I've heard in I've heard from other derm paths who I respect who have said that in sun damaged skin, especially some of those single cell hyperplasia can have some prame positivity. So I personally feel like it can potentially uh, cause excess angst, maybe. 
Um, and then uh, the, you know, like, what do you do if you find one prime positive cell at the margin? Do you call it positive? Do you not? I don't know. I don't know if there's a known answer to that yet. It also may be for the fact that for eight years of my practice, I did not have access to prime regularly. And so I got used to evaluating those kinds of margins just based on H&E. Plus, if I needed, sometimes I'd use SOX or MART1. So uh, it may be different if I would have, you know, used that from day one. But I personally don't. And also the other thing is on a skin excision, I'm not really worried if there's focal residual melanoma in situ versus hyperplasia. I just pick one and move on unless margins are involved, right? Because otherwise, deciding if there's, you know, a few little cells of residual melanoma in situ next to a biopsy site when a patient already has a known invasive melanoma, it matters 0% for patient care, right? The only thing that matters is, is there invasion? If we had an in situ, is there invasion on the excision? Or if we had an invasive melanoma, is there deeper invasion or more atypical features or high risk features like nerve invasion? Are there more, something worse prognostically on the excision than that was present on the biopsy? And then also are the margins negative? And if I can answer those questions that I'm not too worried about, I see sometimes people do multiple stains on excisions where the margins are obviously clear. And I personally, I just don't feel any need to do that because I don't feel like it adds any, any value to patient care. So that's my approach and I'm sure others may differ, but that's how I approach it. Um, right. For the search pad folks out there, we um, also use Prime on lymph nodes when we're trying to decide or just add support to is it a subcapsular hebus versus metastatic bone error. So I, did, I pondered whether to bring that up is if you're looking in a lymph node uh, and trying to decide is this capsular uh, nevus versus metastatic melanoma, that Prime could potentially be helpful there. And other people have advocated for using like HMV45 in that setting, which is going to often be negative in a capsular nevus and, and have patchy positive in a melanoma. I would say that with practice, most cases um, of a capsular nevus versus melanoma can usually be resolved on H&E most of the time based on the way the cells look and how they're arranged. If they're completely bland cells embedded in a linear fashion in the collagen of the capsule, then that to me, that's got to be a, a nevus. It, Problems do arise that sometimes you get cells that are sitting what look like in the parenchyma and you can't tell are they really in the parenchyma or do they connect to a little septum that's stretching down from the capsule. So, and I've seen some bulky like nodal nevi that look kind of scary. And so in those settings, for sure, there are certainly times where, where I've stained them and, and my colleagues have stained them as well. And yeah, I think Prame could potentially help you out if you're struggling with the case like that. Great questions. You guys are an awesome audience. I might, I might be with you till one o'clock, but, but, or whatever it is an hour late on your time, but Hey, I'm, I am totally fine with that. I just don't want to make you guys late for clinic or anything. All right. Any other questions about this or about melanocytic stuff before we move on? So I could talk about this stuff all day. Okay. Hearing silence, we shall move on. And you can always tweet at me if you got a question later that that's keeping you up at night. Okay.